Uh, the next problem I have is one that deals with exponents, and it looks like this. So the goal is to simplify or rewrite x times this, right, in a different way. Now, I don't know, let me, actually, let me read that. x, this should do it. Okay, that would be a little bit better. This is saying, this is an x right here. This is a 3, and this is a 2. And this, of course, is an x. And this sign right here is square root. So what do they want us to do? Oh, well, they want us to rewrite it in a simpler way. How do we do that? Well, one thing we have to know is that if you have, let's say, the square root of a number, x, another way of writing that is x to the 1 half power. This is really important. I'm not going to go too much into the logic of it right here, other than to name it, because here we have something happening that's really important and helpful. This is the square root of x. This also means the square root of x, right? The half power of x. Same idea. And we can keep going with this. Let's say I had the third root of x, and that's what this means right here. And in a simple way, if I was to say, what's the third root? I'll give you an example of 8. That means what number times itself three times, right? Square root, right? Square root of 16 is 4 because 4 times itself gives you 16, or 4 multiplied 2 times gives you 16. This means 2, right? The third root of 8 is 2. And that makes sense, right? Because 2 times 2 times 2, in other words, 2 multiplied 3 times is 8. That's the third root. So that's, that's the idea of the third root. And you keep going, like, fourth root, fifth root. Um, and the same thing would apply. Fourth root is a number times itself four times. Fifth root is a number times itself fifth, five times that equals x, and so forth. But here, you can probably guess another way of writing this is not x to the one-half, but x to the one-third. And that really helps us, because now we can rewrite this in a different way. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose, let's see, green to write. So now we have x, and instead of the, the x squared to the th third root of x squared written like this, I'm going to write like this. x squared to the third root. That means the same thing. And now, now I can break this down. And one thing I want to point out is that this here, notice we're multiplying two exponents. It's x squared to the third. So what's really important is to remember that the commutative property applies to exponents. And the commutative property says I can multiply these in either order. And that means, I, like, for example, 2 times 3, of course, just do a simple example, is 6. And 3 times 2 is 6. Right? The order was changed, but still we got 6. The same thing's true here with these exponents. I can multiply 2 by a third, or a third by 2, and I'll still get the same thing. And I'm telling you that so you don't worry about the order, or the placement of this, this exponent. It, doesn't end, it actually doesn't matter, which is interesting. So, so what? What do we do? Well, let's go back and talk about this idea. Just having an exponent to an exponent. What does that mean? Well, this means x squared to the third power. And third power means take what's inside the parentheses, this whole thing, and multiply it three times. Right? So x squared times x squared times x squared. And what does that mean? Well, each x squared is two x's. x times x. Right? x times x and x times x. And we're multiplying all these x squares. So what does all that mean? It was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 x's. And a short way of writing that is x to the 6th. So what, why am I showing you this? Well, a shortcut is to say, oh, I'm taking three groups of x squareds, right? 1, 2, oops. Three groups of x squared, 1, 2, 3. And each of them have two x's, so all together we're multiplying six x's, and that's x to the sixth. So the shortcut, and you might have seen this before, is just to multiply these two exponents. And you can even write this as a rule. And it just comes from this idea right here. If you have this set up where it's like x to the a to the b, that equals x to the a times b. And using the commutative property, we can say that it equals x to the b times a, or x to the b to the a. And I'm showing you all of this because, again, it's reversible, and that's a useful tool. You can reverse these things and not worry about it. So all that being said, it's hard for me to think about the third root of x squared, but I know 
from what I just showed you that the shortcut is to multiply these two exponents. So I'm going to do that. So now I have x and then 2 times times a third. What's that? Well, that's 2 thirds, right? 2 times a third means you have 2 1 thirds, and that's 2 thirds. So, 2 thirds. Oops, I forgot this x is still there. So x times x to the 2 thirds. So all we did again is multiply these two exponents. Now I have this. What do I do? Well, think about something like, I don't know, x squared times x to the third. How do we deal with that? Well, x squared means you have x times x. x to the third means you have x times x times x. And we're multiplying all this stuff. How many x's is that? Well, we have two here, three more there. That's five x's. So here we're multiplying out five x's. That's x to the fifth. And you might see right away that what you can do when you're multiplying two things at the same base is just to add the exponents, right? Two and three is five. So here I'm going to do the same thing, only this is a little bit tougher because we have x to the one, right? If you don't see the variable written, sorry, the exponent written, you can assume it's one, right? Plus two thirds. So what's one plus two thirds? Well, right, as a mixed number, one and two thirds. I'm going to convert that to a uh, mix, excuse me, an improper fraction. Three times one is three, plus two is five, so that's x to the five thirds. Or you can think of one and two thirds as one plus two thirds. One is like three over three, and two thirds is two over three. Together equals five over three. So here's our answer, but we can keep going. So if I, if I pull these two apart, right, another way of thinking of five thirds is thinking of x, right, and then five times a third. You can break those up. That's the same thing. Why does this help me? Well, this allows me to rewrite stuff, right? I can think of this, again, I put these parentheses here, working backwards from our strategy before. I can think of this as x to the fifth power and then the third root of that. And I could write it like this, the third root of x to the fifth. And all I'm doing there, again, is applying this as the third root, and this is x to the fifth. And, of course, I could reverse that order. It wouldn't matter. I could still take... Um, Right, the third root of x, and then that to the fifth power. That would be the same thing. But we should know how to manipulate all these exponents, and that's kind of the general run-through. So I got a little sloppy here, sorry about that. But the goal is rewrite your roots as fractions, and then use the law of exponents to move stuff around until you can rewrite everything in a different way. So I don't know if you can read my answer over here, but it's the third root of x, right? The third root of x to the fifth power. And that's another way of writing this original term. And that's kind of interesting that this, right, x, the square root of, the third root of x squared times x equals the third root of x to the fifth power. You can find all, all kinds of interesting connections by playing with the algebra here. All right, hope you enjoyed.